Tune shading in cycles is a problem I often see online that very few people have a good answer for. The general answers I have found have either relied on some sort of light independent shader or an overly complicated method. Using shaders that are unable to be altered by light sources in a 3D environment is in my opinion a complete waste. In this video, we will be making a very simple cell shader that will react to light. But first, we need to understand the logic behind building a shader and understand what result we are seeking. So the first thing you have to understand is that making a tune shader is not realistic. So tune shading is not realistic. And Cycles is a photorealistic renderer. Um, you know, Blender internal, you know, it's going to be phased out in a couple months. There's no reason to keep using it to make tune shaders. So we should just move on you know, make and use, start using cycles. So in order to make cycles render our tune shaders, we need to almost break it. Now what makes a tune shader a tune, a tune shader or makes a tune a tune is the cell shading and the line work. There are two kinds of cell shading we'll be making today. Flat cell shader and the specular cell shader. Flat cell shaders involve two main colors per material a light, brighter color, and a darker color. So there's only usually only two colors in it. And uh, there's always a sharp line between two areas. There's never a gradient between the two. Uh, therefore, when we make our shader, we have to ensure that Cycles does not go crazy and make certain things way too dark or way too bright. Uh, for example, this area um, between her neck and her hair, if Cycles had its way, it would be almost black. So we need to ensure that this does not happen. So in our materials, we will actually set up the darkest possible color. So um, that that's going to solve that problem. So in an example, another example here: lit, dark, lit, dark, lit, dark, lit, dark, lit, dark. So you're going to see this, all these are only two tones, not really specular. The only things that are specular or hat or no way to say it's because of super bright areas of the eyes, and that's going to be okay. He doesn't have it because he's supposed to be like almost a monster. But you know, everyone else has specular eyes. What's specular? Well, specular cell shading is very similar to uh, tune shading. I'm sorry, to flat shading, flat cell shading. Uh, the only difference is that there is a specular portion or a super lit portion. Attack on Titan, I think. Uh, if you really look at it, it's almost a signature style of that anime. Almost everything has a specularity. The nose is specularity, the shirt is specularity, uh, the hair is specularity. Um, you know, so uh, Ryoko from uh, Kill a Kill, same thing, has that super specular hair. Um, I mean, the thing is, most anime don't go as crazy as Attack on Titan. Most of them, they just go very basic, they only use it for hair, for, for eyes. Hitagi, Monogatari, I think. Monogatari. Uh, there's so many names, I forgot, I forgot all of them. And then also for metal. Certain metals will get a specular treatment. For example, Full Metal Alchemist, they gave Alphonse specular highlights. It's not, I mean, it's not always used, um, but it's nice, it's nice to know. Especially if you intend on making characters one day, you want to use, for the, at least for the eyes, you want that specularity. And the last thing about cell shading and tune shading is it requires line work. Uh, you know, if you use, a, if you end up using, uh, you know, cell shading, and then you, you don't use uh, tune, you don't use uh, line work, and it sort of falls flat. It doesn't look as good. In my opinion. So definitely line work is important. Uh, but again, remember, lines don't exist in real life. There are no lines. And so we need to get cycles to generate these lines. Um, but how are we going to do that? Well, there's two methods. There is freestyle, which is not even cycles at all. That's actually just a some kind of node-based thing. Um, problem with freestyle, well, if you're using it for one still image, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. However, if you intend to use it for animation, it's too much. It takes way too long, and uh, you know, even though, like that extra time is maybe it's fine for a still image, but for 24 frames a second animation, forget it. It's not worth it. Uh, but freestyle is a little easier to, to handle. 
Or the other alternative is the, invul in, uh, the inverted hull method. The inverted hull method uh, is, again, is relatively easy, much faster, and freestyle. Um, but it, it does, you do have less freedom with it, I'll, I'll admit that. But um, that's our, really our only option right now. So I'll be teaching you guys how to do the inverted hull method for, for your lines. And this is the look we'll be going for. Um, you can see this is uh, actually just flat cell shade. We have this the lit portion, the darker portion, and lines. Generated lines. Same here. Uh, lit, darker, lines. Lit, darker, there's lines. So this is the look we'll be going for. Alright, so let's, let's get started and let's uh, get into Blender. Alright guys, so this is... Uh, Blender now, we're a very basic scene. We just have our lamp, we have our sun, and we have a camera. That's all we need for that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to ensure we get those sharp lines. The way we do that is for our sun lamp. That sun lamp, we have to decrease the size to zero. Uh, you can see some distortions there, but uh, don't worry about that for now. We'll, that'll be fixed eventually, later on. Uh, but as of right now, that's okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go to our world editor and make sure we turn that off. We need to turn our materials off because it's going to affect the, how the uh, how our materials are covered, are colored, and we're not going to be able to really edit it too well. Now we're going to our node editor and we're going to start adding our materials. So we're going to get rid of that default diffuse material, and we're going to add a tune BSDF material. Now we can sort of see it looks a bit strange right now. That's because it's way too small. It's, the light is only affecting a very small portion of the area, or the surface area. So we want it to max out in the surface area. And you can see if you, if you max out, you actually get a distortion. So the highest amount of area it can take before it distorts is 0.9. So now that we have that, um, we can sort of see what the problem is, how it's still way too dark in areas where it's... Uh, you know, associating does not need to have this. Usually areas that are uh, you know, dark or, or not lit are not this dark, they're not black. So what we need to do is we need to add a shadeless material to light out those portions. And the way we're going to do that is we first add an emission material. And let's set that emission material to pretty dark but not black. And let's just um, look at how it looks for now. And because it's emitting, then this light is coming out of it. So we want to make sure that this light that's coming out of those dark areas is shadeless. So let's uh, make it shadeless. We're going to add a mixed shader. Bottom, move that top, throw the bottom, and we're going to add a light path. So, how this works is this this node is asking if it is a camera array, or if the ray is hitting the camera, it will have no effect. Otherwise, it will be pure will be this color. Maybe it's the other way If it's a camera array, yeah, it, yeah. If, if it's hitting the camera, it will be this color. Otherwise, yeah, then, yeah. So I, I, I confuse it. If it is a camera array, then it will be this color. Otherwise, if it hits something else, it will have no effect. So that it, now it is not shadeless. Um, but that's still not what we're looking for. So now what we need to do is we need to actually use an add shader to combine them. And the way this works is adding a shader together, what we'll, what we'll literally will do is it will, com it will add up the RGB values. So it will add these values to these values and it will give us um, the values here. Now black, pure black if you look pure zero. So that means that anything that is black will actually be this color. Now unfortunately the side effect of this is that everything else will also be um, 
this much brighter. So you can uh, just you know, lower the lit portions a little bit just to make up for that additional light coming out of the machine. But that's that's it. That's uh, your flat tune shader. Um, now, if you want to add a specular, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, so all we'll do is we will add a, another tune shader. Uh, this time, it will be glossy. Um, and because uh, the way we're doing it is we're using another um, add shader, we can actually keep it pretty dark. Point one is all you need for everything. And then uh, all you do is you have just do an add shader, and that's it. Okay, now make sure you your size. You want to either uh, you want to keep the size on zero, and do it smooth like that. That's one way to do it, or you can have no smooth or anything the sides. It's up to you. Um, it gives very similar results. Uh, I actually like the size. The size the um, but that will give you a specular highlight. So so that's uh. That's that's the tune shader, but now that's not everything. I also promised I would talk to you about the inverted hull. Uh, the inverted hull is uh, we'll, yeah, we'll use the solidify modifier to do that. So the way we'll do that is that we will um, use solidify, and we will uh, set the thickness uh, of two centimeters. Um, Offset to one, and we're going. To, the most important step would be flip the normals, and then we also set the material index offset. This will set it so that new material we use will, will be the material used in the solidified modifier. Uh, we're flipping the normals because uh, I'll explain why in the material, and uh, so let's get started. So the new material we're going to use. Uh, so it, it's going to look a bit off right now. We're still we're still working on it pretty hard. So. Uh, so let's remember, a outline must be shadeless, it must be transparent, uh, it must be pure black, and it must not affect the base material in any way, no shadows, no anything. So re remembering all, of, all of those um, requirements, let's get started. So the first thing we need to remember is shadeless, so let's, uh, let's add an emission, it's pure black. I actually think it's start easier to start off thinking about how it's not going to affect anything. So let's, let's do that first. Uh, so geometry, mission, I'm trying to remember this. Geometry, mission, or transparency. So remember, so it's, it's not supposed to affect, um, it's supposed to be transparent, and it's supposed to be uh, invisible essentially. So the way, the way, the reason why it's important for us to flip the normals is that that means that it is um, if normals are facing away from us or they are back facing if their backs are facing us so we want we want the back faces anything that's face not facing us to be cold so, so the way we'll do that is using this mixture so if it is back shading back facing if it is back facing we want it to be transparent Otherwise, you want to be a pure black. Yeah. Okay. There we go. If it, if it is back face, if it is back facing, you want it to be transparent. Otherwise, it will um, it will be pure black. So that means that these areas are the only areas that are not back facing us. The backs are not facing us. So that means we will see them as pure black. Uh, that, I know you're saying, where the hell is the rest of the shading? But the problem is that even though we can't see it, it's casting a shadow on the, on the rest of the pot or the lamp. So we're not done yet. Now we still need to make it um, transparent and shadeless. So it's still not shadeless, not transparent. So let's see, now we need to add another, uh, another mix shader. Let's go to the bottom. Uh, another transparency. Uh, we're not done yet, but we're 
almost. And we now we need to make it uh, shadeless. This shader is staying. This is uh, shader is staying. If it, if the, sh the ray is hitting the camera, then it will be transparent. Otherwise, it will be this pure black color that we've just. Uh, otherwise, it will follow these rules. So uh, that's that's how you make uh, an outline. So you can sort of see it, the outline from here. And then, you know, then we can add a floor, we can add a uh, floor, you know, we can uh, restore our world. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Alright, so, so that's, uh, that's that's what we did. That's, uh, that's our tune shader. Uh, obviously, it can be much more complex than this. I mean, I, you know, I, I have other projects where I make much more complex things. Um, but for now, uh, that's that's everything we're doing. So thank you guys for watching, um, and uh, hopefully this has helped you guys. All right, see you guys later. Bye.